Welcome to Blender. In this video I'm going to show you how to get in and out of edit mode. Uh, if you need to know things to save you from issues later as well as a few preferences. So there's a couple different ways to get into edit mode. You can select your cube and you can go up here where it says object mode and you can change it to edit mode. You can also go up here to the modeling tab. If you have your cube selected and you select the modeling tab, it automatically puts you in edit mode. It gets rid of the timeline that's down here so you have more space to work with. And it also throws you into the modifiers tab and gives you a whole bunch of options over here on the left. And the shortcut for going in and out of edit mode is tab. So if you hit tab, you can just go in and out of edit mode. Hold on one second. Screen has keys. So tab goes in and out of edit mode. So now that we're in edit mode, I want to go over a few preferences to uh, make life easier for you. So if you go up to edit at the top left and go to preferences, it'll pop this window open and then it's hidden the cube, but I want to see it. So I'm going to hold uh, shift and middle mouse and just move it over to the right. So the first thing we have is interface. In interface, you can uh, scale the resolution, make things bigger or smaller. Uh, I'm kind of blind, so I keep mine a little high. <laughs> and I want you guys to be able to see it. Uh, the next one is themes. And in themes, we go to the 3D viewport. And you can change all the colors of everything in Blender, but I suggest you leave it alone until you get a little more uh, idea of what everything is and what you want to change because it could take you a week just to get all this stuff set the way you want it. Uh, what I do want to change though is the vertex size. So the vertex is this little dot here on each corner of the cube and if you bring it up you can make it bigger or smaller. And I like to keep mine around five or six because like I said I'm blind and I can't see those things. The next one we're going to look at is input. Uh, input, you have emulate number pad in case you don't have a number pad on your keyboard. And also uh, emulate three button mouse in case you don't have a three button mouse. And there's other settings you can change here also. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is navigation. Navigation, you can change whether it's a turntable or a trackball for your orbit method, which is the middle mouse button. Um, you can also select orbit around selection. The one I wanted to show you though is this zoom to mouse position. I don't like it, but some people do. Um, so if I want to zoom in, if I zoom in, it just zooms to wherever my viewport's looking. But if you check the zoom to mouse position, when you zoom in, it'll zoom wherever your mouse is. So you can focus on different things. And next we have system. Uh, in system, you can turn on uh, you can click your CUDA and your optics and turn on your graphics card and your processor. Uh, you also have your undo steps here that you can change. I wouldn't go too crazy high because if you run out of cash, it will crash Blender and you'll lose everything you're working on. So, And next we have save and load. Save and load has load UI. So if you download somebody else's Blender, like if I send you a Blender file, when you open it, it's going to give you how I have my Blender set up. So if I have like extra windows made or just things changed, it's going to load that. So when you load it, you want to uncheck the load UI. There's an option for that when you import also. So we also have this save versions. Save versions gives you extra blend files when you save. So if you look at your file folder that you're saving your blend files to, You'll have, um, let's say, a shoe.blend, and then you'll have a shoe.blend1. And that's just an extra saved version that this number controls. So if you have it set as zero, you'll just get a dot blend. If you have it set to one or two, you'll get a dot blend1 and a dot blend2. And your regular dot blend. And lastly, we have file paths. Uh, and you can tell Blender where to save and access things by assigning file paths to these. You really don't have to mess with it too much. We did make an asset library in your uh, textures folder I believe. So you can, or maybe it was in the uh, other folder. We made an asset folder. You can uh, assign that to this one now if you want to.
we'll be using it later. Okay, we can go ahead and close that. And I wanted to show you guys where your scene statistics are and how to see what's in the scene and, and a bunch of information. So if you go up here to this little tab here, and it's the overlays tab, and you click down, there's a statistics checkbox. So go ahead and check that. And it puts all your statistics over here of what's in the scene. And you can also find that down here where your version 3.0 is or whatever version you're using. If you right click it, you can turn on scene statistics there as well and it'll be down here. So the way this works is whatever you have selected versus how many is in the scene. So we have one of three objects in the scene selected right now. So if we tab back into object mode, that's one object, two objects, and three objects. And we have one of those objects selected. If we have none, it says none. Uh, if we're in edit mode, it has the amount of vertices that are a part of our object. So cube obviously has eight vertices. We have zero selected. So if we select one, now we have one selected or two, and it tells you. Uh, same with edges but we can't select an edge right now so to select edges we have these three buttons up here so the first one is vertex which gives us our vertex selection the second one is edge and you can select an edge that way and the last one is face and you can also hold shift and select all three and then you can select whatever you want that way uh, I typically leave it off and I use hotkeys to select between these. The hotkeys for these are one for vertex, two for edge, and three for face. So one is vertex, two is edge, and you can just that way you can select what you want to select pretty quickly. We also have a point of origin. So the point of origin is this little orange dot in the middle. Uh, I don't want you to confuse it with a selected vertex. You can't select the point of origin. Um, we'll get into what it does later, but I just wanted you to know it was there so you don't try to move it. Next thing we have is the face orientation. So if I hit 3 on my keyboard and select face, I'm going to go ahead and delete this face by hitting X and faces. And if you hit your overlays panel drop down, and you go down here to face orientation it shows you whether the face is inside facing inside or outside so anything in second light that's red is going to be uh, transparent you'll see right through it and anything blue you'll be able to place your uh, textures and materials on so to give you an example what that'll look like in second life I'm going to hit tab and go back into object mode and then I'm going to hit my drop down up here for my viewport shading and turn on back face culling. So now you can see as I look into the cube I can see right through it but if I turn it around I can still see the faces. So this is what will happen in Second Life. You, it'll look weird because you can see right through the cube on one way but not on the other. We also have in our overlay no. yep oh in edit mode. So hit tab to go back in edit mode. In our overlays panel at the very bottom we have these normals. Normals are the direction that a face is actually facing. Um, so if I, let's say I bevel this edge. So I'm going to hit 2 and control B and bevel the edge. So now if I turn this on, it'll make more sense. So this is the straight out one for the normal for the faces. So I'm going to turn it on and it puts these little lines on here. And you can stretch those out with the uh, size, make them longer. So now you can see which direction they're facing. So there's none facing inside. Let me turn back face calling back off. So there's none facing inside. They're all facing outside. And what makes it different than face orientation is it actually tells you which direction the face is pointing as opposed to whether it's inside or outside. That's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys are learning something. And please hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.